really excited about you being here in the new season as we move into September. You know, they say Labor Day is, is kind of like in the minds of people, school year, and we're moving out of one season into the beautiful autumn, fall season, and um, we need a little rain, so the Lord bless us with a little rain. I hope, uh, trust that uh, your electricity's all on and all is well, and God is good. We're just blessed to be a part of uh, this beautiful Labor Day weekend. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I believe he's going to really speak a divine word to our hearts. Father, we thank you that on this Labor Day, this Labor Day weekend, as we share, Lord, a day of rest on Monday from our labors, our physical labors, Lord, we thank you that you have a, a special rest for the people of God, a kingdom rest that you promised for this season, a rest of peace, a rest of joy in trusting the living God. Make yourself known today through your word now, and we'll give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said a big amen, if you agree with that, amen. Many of you know that in the late 1800s, many Americans toiled 12 hours a day, seven days a week, often in physical, demanding, low-paying jobs. Children worked too, some five years old, on farms and factories and mines. Conditions were often harsh and unsafe. It was in this context that the American workers held the first Labor Day Parade, marching from New York City Hall to a giant picnic at an uptown park on September 5, 1882. President Grover Cleveland made Labor Day a national holiday in June 1894 as he faced a crisis of railway workers striking in Chicago. That's the origin of Labor Day. It was, the context was not uh, during a, a great season is really a, uh, an uprising of workers uh, that were facing injustice seven days a week, 12 hours a day, children five years old working in the mills and the farms and low pay. And that's when they decided to parade. I, I heard that was like 10,000 people in New York City walked and paraded to, to demand change. You know, and now we see Grover Cleveland made it a national holiday in 1894, but we celebrate this rest from our physical labors on Monday, but the Bible talks about a, a better rest, a, a new day of rest, a spiritual rest. I love this because this is a rest that God gives to his people that you can't find in the earth. It only comes from the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God in our hearts. It only comes when people put their full trust and faith in God, that a supernatural rest comes to our soul. It's what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine: 29, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden with burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourself and learn of me, for I am meek, I'm humble at heart, you'll find rest for your souls. I love that Jesus was talking about in our busy society, that my kingdom living on the inside of people's hearts and in their minds through the presence of the Holy Spirit will give them a supernatural peace and a supernatural rest in the midst of the activities of life. The world's peace is based on circumstances, situations, but God's peace is greater. You could be in the most complex season of your life, and the Lord says, be anxious for nothing, Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious and worried about nothing. What a promise from God. God does not want his people worrying. Be anxious and worried about nothing, but in everything, pray. That's the antidote for worry, anxiety. Pray. And he said with definite petitions, pray, and then after you pray, thank me that I heard you. And keep thanking me if it comes back on you, the worry, the fear. Keep thanking me that I heard you. And he said this, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will mount guard over your mind and heart. What a tremendous promise. This morning we want to talk about God's kingdom peace, God's kingdom rest on your Labor Day weekend. I want you to lean back into the kingdom. Stress-free weekend. A stress-free season. I love what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 when he said, Consider the lilies of the field. Consider the birds. They don't toil. They don't spin. They don't gather food in their barns. 
The Lord says, if I clothe the fields with beauty, and if I take care of the birds, how much more will I take care of you? And then he said, oh, you have little faith. Why do you not believe me? And then he said, so all you have to do is keep seeking me. Keep walking with me, my kingdom, my will for your life. And all these things shall be added unto you. Then he says, which of you by worrying could add one inch to your stature? Will worrying solve any problems? No. And he says, I don't want you worrying. I am your God. I am your source. This morning we're going to talk about God's peace. In Hebrews chapter 4, God's rest, he says, that chapter 4 verse 6, God talks about a rest. God's rest is there for the people to enter. God's saying there's a rest for you today. But those who first heard this good, new good news failed to enter it because of their disobedience, their lack of trust in God. Back in Joshua's days, back in Moses' day, they failed to enter the rest that God had for them. So God set up another time for us entering his rest. And he says, that time is today. I've got good news for you. God said, today I'm offering you peace and rest. And you're going to find, I believe, as before the service ends, there's going to be a grace to release things and just enter into peace and trust and know that God's got it. Then he said, God announced this day through David much later in the words already quoted. Today when you hear my voice, God's voice, don't harden your hearts. He said, now if Joshua has succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. Listen to this. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. Look at your neighbor and say, man, there's a special rest for you today. God's promised you special rest. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best. God's saying, let us do our best to enter that rest. That's what I strive to. It's kind of a, uh, an oxymoron, striving to enter into rest. But sometimes it is a little battle on the mind when you're dealing with things to say, don't worry, Dominic. God's got this. He's with you. He's for you. He's working on your behalf right now. Cast your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you affectionately and watches over you watchfully. You know, those are the things that we say to ourselves. He says, but let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey, if we don't trust God, as the people of Israel deal, we'll fail. We'll fail to enter this great promise that God has for us. What is God saying to us this morning? He's saying, don't put all your faith in your personal labor. But put your trust and faith in God in the midst of your labor. He's saying, I want, you to, I want you to learn to rest from striving, from worrying, and doing life in your own power, in your own ability. He wants you to be leaning in on him in your activities, in your work, in the provision of what you're putting together. He wants, he wants us to trust him. Now, I don't know about you, but that will keep you close to God. That's the way you stay close to God. Some people say, how much should I pray every day? Should I pray an hour a day? Should I pray 20 minutes a day? Should I pray a minute a day? I like what one preacher once said, Smith Wigglesworth. He said, I never pray more than 20, 20 minutes a day. But he goes, I never go without talking to God 20 minutes a day. One pastor did say, just pray one minute, one minute at a time. Just the constant flow of conversation with God. Lord, this is going on today. I'm going to cast my care upon you. When I leave my office today, I did the best I can. I'm going to commit that customer to you. I'm going to commit that sale to you. That why I'm sleeping tonight, I'm believing that you're working things out. Because the Bible says about the God that we serve, the kingdom God that we've been graciously brought into. This is the best news in the world. Why you sleep, God never sleeps and he never slumbers. That's why he wants you to sleep real good tonight. Because he's working for you. He doesn't want you staying up all night worrying. He really wants you to sleep well. He gives his beloved sleep. And he wants you to trust in him. He wants you to roll your cares upon him. And trust that while you're sleeping, he's performing only what God can perform. You know, matter of fact, the Bible says in these days, people will be pressing into the kingdom. Matter of fact, one translation says people will be running into coming into God's kingdom. See, what we're here today, what you've experienced in our worship service, we're not talking about coming to a religious thing or a dead, a dead, a dead letter, a dead service, a dead God. It's a life-giving presence. And even though you cannot see the spirit 
dimension of God, it's more real and tangible than the natural world. And the kingdom of God is not something you see physically. It's something God comes by his spirit and lives in you. In Christ, Jesus Christ is the way into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father, come into the kingdom, but by me. And once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says he takes you out of the kingdom of darkness and he puts you into the kingdom of his son. It's a, it's a miracle that happens in, in a blink of a moment when you move by faith into Christ. And I love that. Romans chapter 14, 17, he says this, And the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not physical appetites or meeting, eating and drinking. The kingdom of God is righteousness, a sense of feeling right. You know how many people are doing so many things to make themselves feel right? The moment you come into the kingdom of God, your sins are forgiven. You, some of you don't even realize the weight of sin. Sin is a weight. I mean, back when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, back when Christ came in me, January 18th, 1976, I know I was saved at five, and um, January 18th, 1976, when I, I just happened to come to the altar that Sunday night, and when I said, Jesus, come in my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord, it was like a weight came off me. I didn't know I was carrying that weight, but the sin, sin is a weight you don't even know you're carrying. But Jesus Christ bore your sin on the cross when he died as the Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the moment you put your faith in Christ, that sin is lifted off you back to the cross where it always belonged. He's already forgiven you of your sins. He's already paid the price for your sins. And I've got good news for you. Your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins because you're going to have a tendency to miss it from time to time. But you need to know that the full payment, the Lamb of God, one sacrifice, once and for all, He's forgiven you, He's, he's paid the price for your sins, and He gives you a right standing with God. And then He begins to work in you, creating you the desire and the power to transform you from, we don't, we, now that doesn't give you a, a grace just to sin whenever you want, you don't want to. Once you have the real thing, you, you just have a desire to follow this great God who changed you from the inside out. It wasn't man-made pressure and rules and, and dead letters and traditions from the out. Nobody wants that. I don't blame people from not going to church to get a dead church and a dead God and dead rules. God is a life-giving spirit. He comes inside of you with love, power, joy, peace, wisdom, the ability to prosper, the ability to be successful. As an 18-year-old boy, when I got transformed by the power of God, I worked in the Eastern market, and God taught me how to sell. God taught me how to win. God, I knew if I could, if God just gave me the ability, he gave me the ability to prosper so I could tell the world, this is how great God is. He wants teenagers to win. He wants teenagers to be successful. He wants young adults to win. He wants us to be overcomers and world changers. He wants that. He desires for that. Can I hear a good amen, church? And we see this in David's psalm, the psalm of David, Psalms 23. David was a king, but he was also a teenager. And he was a musician, also a warrior. And the Bible said, David, by the Holy Spirit, penned these words, Psalms 23, the, the Lord is my shepherd psalm. And I love this because David penned these words and he declared personally what God is to him. If I could do anything for you as your pastor this morning, I want to take God out of the, the, up, the, of the up, up, abstract, out of the formula, and we need to make God personal. You need to make God personal with you. See, I really believe if you don't have a Bible that you can write in, you need to take that Bible, put it on the shelf, and buy a Bible that you can write in. Because that's the way I got personal with God. I would put my name by every promise. I would make it so real, personal. You know, I, I would say things, if God before Dominic... Who could be against Dominic? God shall supply all Dominic's needs. And I used to use the words that nothing will separate Dominic from the love of God. And I would say those things. you got to make that letter. The Bible is God's love letter to you. And I would, I would carve out those 10, 12, 20 promises, write them on a 3 by 6 card, stick them in my pocket, and I would quote them when I was in the marketplace at work and I had problems around me. I would, I would speak the word of the Lord. I would say what God said. He's my personal God. 
You know, I know he's your savior, he is your God, but he's also my personal God. See, many of you know about Amira. You know about Amira, but I know Amira. Amira's my wife. She's my best friend. She's my lover. She's, I get to enjoy her cooking. See, she's personal to me. I get to enjoy her wisdom. See, that's personal. And that's the way the Lord wants to become to you, your personal God, your Father, your Lord, your best friend, your companion, the one who walks with you and talks with you and walks to work with you, goes to school with you. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. A friend that sticks closer, and he doesn't leave you during the hard times. As a matter of fact, he gets closer to you during the difficult, challenging seasons of life. I will never leave you, the Bible says, God says about you. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you, that you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear. What can man do to me when God is on my side? Can I hear a good amen, church? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. When you make your boast in God in a, in a proper way, David begins to really boast in the Lord. He begins to declare God's greatness in his own personal life. And you know this psalm, Psalm 23. Matter of fact, I'd like us to quote it together. Will you? Let's say it out loud together, Psalms 23. Say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I love it. Stop right there. The Lord is who? He's my shepherd. Say it again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. See what David's saying? He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Praise God. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. He's your shepherd. Praise the Lord. This is when your faith becomes robust, when you begin to declare what God is to you. Based on the Bible, what he already said he is to you. When you begin to declare these things like King David did, out of his mouth. Number one, the Lord is my shepherd. Everybody say, my shepherd. That word, the Hebrew, I'm going to give you ten Hebrew names real quickly. That Hebrew name, God was, God showed his character and his nature through these Hebrew names. And the first one is Jehovah Reha, which means the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my pastor. Now this is a powerful thing because to have the Lord, as, it's great that you have me as your pastor, your shepherd, you know, but you have one a lot better than me, praise God. I mean, God anoints me, he gives me a gift to be physically your pastor, he's put a gift on my life, I know it, he told me, that I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you the gift to pastor that church. So the Lord called me a pastor, I'm a gift, believe it or not, I'm a gift to you. But you've got even a greater gift, my friend, a gift from God to you, to bless your life, and to feed you, and to help lead you. But you've got the great shepherd, the great pastor. When you wake up in the morning, he leads you in paths of righteousness. He feeds you. He leads you. He cares for you. He provides for you. And many times he'll do it through your pastor, and he'll do it through the church, and he'll do it through brothers and sisters and others. But he's a great, great God. See, me as your pastor right here, my job is to lead and feed. And that's why you heard about that we're going to have a season of At the Movies. Starting the third Wednesday of September. See, I've taken you out of a season of prayer. We had five days of prayer. Uh, but this season, we're going into the harvest season. And we're going to take Hollywood films, and they are going to be so anointed, so powerful. We showed, we had a hundred of our Dream Team people at the Imagine Theater on Friday. People were crying. People were weeping. They were blessed as the message came through the Hollywood film. We're going to change a Hollywood film and make it a modern-day parable. We're going to bring truth. But it's a great time for you to bring your coworkers of the lost. Many are going to find Christ in this season. Can I hear a good amen? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I love that. I love what the Lord says. The Lord is my shepherd. See, not only is the Lord a shepherd, not only I'm a shepherd, I believe everyone should have a shepherd, a pastor. How many people believe everyone should have a pastor? Everyone should have a church that they call home. If you're here today and you're visiting and you're, you're checking us out, God bless you, but you've got a heart. The Lord will tell you where's your spiritual home. 
If you don't know, I know there's about 10 to 20 churches in Metro Detroit that I could let you know. They're great churches, great pastors, but everybody needs a home, spiritual home to be fed faith, fed the word of God, brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, at 1230, right after the service, we have Vincent Joe's catering one of the best lunches in the world. And we're going to be down there for one hour. Child care is provided. If you're thinking about maybe becoming a member, joining, want to know more about Oakland Church, I'm going to have a lunch with you. We're going to have people down there, you, visitors that have been visiting. It's going to be free. There's child care. We're going to let you know how this ministry was birthed by God. We're going to share you some of our vision, mission statement, our culture points. And you're going to be blessed. We want to welcome you to have lunch with us for an hour right after the service. Can I hear an amen? amen. But as a pastor... I have no greater joy, 3 John 1, 4, no greater joy than to hear that the people of God are walking in truth. There's no greater joy for a pastor, no greater joy for a parent to know that the children are walking in God's truth. See, my responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work of the ministry. You know, there's a, there's a lot of churches that might be big and large and strong and all that, they got numbers, but the real benefit, the real goal of a pastor should be how is he equipping the people with the right tools so that they can become the success that God's called them to be. Get off the pew and get in the game where they can use their faith in the marketplace. They can use their faith with their children, their marriage, their home. That's the greatest thing. That's why we've got community groups coming up next week. You're going to begin to see the launch of community. We've got 30-some community groups. They're going to be launching in homes and coffee shops around the city. Young people, middle-aged people, married couples, mothers and and, and marriage ministries, it's, all this is going to be going on starting next Sunday. And I love it because people in this church are literally opening up their homes. They're meeting at separate, different places. And as a pastor, I, I just could not be more proud of that it's just not Pastor Dominic ministering. We got a flock of 250 people that are ministers in this church that are stepping up and stepping out to grow and to build and develop the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is not coming back for a week, anemic. Sorry, church. He's coming back for a world-changing, mature people. A church who know who they are and know who he is. The church that knows who their God is will be strong. And to give the Lord a good hand clap. You get what I'm saying. It's going to be a powerful time. Powerful time. And I want to tell all you community group leaders that are stepping up, I got a promise from God for you. The Lord wanted me to give you this. Hebrews 6 to God is not unjust to forget your work and your labor of love which you have showed towards his name and the way that you've ministered to the saints. What is God saying? I won't forget, and I'm not unfaithful. I see the time you're investing in souls. I'm going to stretch you, I'm going to grow you, I'm going to speak to you, I'm going to enlarge you, but I'm telling you, I'm going to bless you. I'm not unfaithful, and I don't forget what you do in my name. I'm going I'm I'm to redeem the time. I'm going to bless you coming in, bless you going out. Your engagement with me is going to cause you to rise to new and great levels. Can I hear a good, good amen to that? Amen? Praise God. Number two, he says, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd because he's my shepherd. I shall not want. That Hebrew word is the Lord will provide. He's my provider. You know, the tendency sometimes is for us to be our own provider. You know, I want to encourage you. Don't put your trust just in your ability. Don't make money your God. Or just, or just what you could accomplish in your own strength. Don't let money be the total decision maker of your life. I love what 1 Timothy says. Command those who are rich in this present world. Third world countries around this world. Everyone in here is rich compared to them. He says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. I love that. God is not against us providing for us richly for our enjoyment, our blessing. And I love that about our God. That's a beautiful thing. God is your provider. And I'm not saying that payday comes every Friday with God. But when you serve him, follow him, and put your faith in him, and do what he, and obey what he's telling you to do, Friday, payday does come. Blessings will come. Your children will see it. Your family will see it. Can I hear a good amen, church? But statistics say people who make more give less. That's what statistics say. People who make more money and more money, uh, they give less than some people that have a little amount of money. They desire, they're desire and wanting to be financially secure. I want to ask you a question this morning. How much does it take to be totally secure, to be impenetrable against any type of outside force that would break in, steal, and destroy? How much would it take? Can I give you the answer? 
Can I give you the answer? More than you currently have, okay? <laughs> More than you currently So don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and, and eats and thieves break in. Store treasures in heaven. Keep your faith in God. I'm not saying saving money, putting money away, investing properly. That's all good stewardship things that God tells us to do. But in the middle of it all, make God your source. No matter what the economy does. Say, God, you shall supply all of my needs. I put my faith in you. Number three, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now this is Labor Day weekend. I'm talking to you about a rest that you can enter into today. This is a personal thing with you and God. And he's saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you lie down in green pastures. This is a good thing about a shepherd because sometimes, you know, we don't know we need to lay down and eat some green grass. And the Lord's saying, there's times I need to let you stop. I need to make you lie down and let me feed you, feed you the good word. And, and, and then he said this, and I'll lead you beside still waters. And I love that about God. You know, when I first got born again, when I first got spiritually born, just like, just like a, a, a little baby, when a little baby's born, the baby comes out of the mother's womb looking for the mother's breast to, to feed from. To gain immediately, instinctively, that baby's looking. That baby needs to be fed. That baby's hungry. That baby will cry all night. That baby wants to be. And spiritually, when you get truly born spiritually, there's a divine spiritual hunger to eat the milk of God's word. I found out God drove me right to the Bible. And that's what 1 Peter 2, 2 says. As newborn babes and infants desire the pure milk of God's word so that you may grow into your salvation. And you'll eat the word. God leads us and guides us into green pastures. Then he said he leads you beside still waters. That speaks of peace. Jehovah Shalom. The peace of God. Everybody say the peace of God. And he's going to lead you into his peace. Which is probably the most powerful force that the kingdom of God gives us in our minds and our emotions. Jesus said, I'm leaving you with a gift. And that gift is peace of mind and peace of heart. And the peace I give you is a gift that the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. Now, I don't know about you, but that promise that I could leave church today. One translation, Jesus says this, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. God's saying, I'm going to give you my peace. God the creator said, I'm going to give you my peace. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. That's the kind of peace that God gives that's the, that's the greatest blessing, to know that you can cast your cares upon the Lord. Every one of them. Lord, I, I give that burden, I give that care. You do the best you can, but I learned young that I can cast my cares, worries, anxieties, troubles that are going on at work. See, some of you, you might have, you might have stress that's work-related might have stress that's family related. You might have stress that's financially related, stress that's health related. Sometimes stress that we put on ourselves, we just add so much to our schedule. And that promise is the Lord says, cast all your cares, all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties upon me because I care for you affectionately and I watch over you watchfully. I'm gonna give you a peace. You can't find this in the world. The world says, I tried pills, I've tried booze, I've tried this, I've tried that, just to get peace. But the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, he brings in supernatural, the God kind of peace. Matter of fact, God just doesn't give you peace. The Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Some of you this morning just need to, just need to enter into that rest and say, Lord, I just trust you. I can't strive, I can't, I can't try to perform it, make it, I get it. I really felt this Labor Day, the Lord wants you to just, just lay back in the grace of God. Lay back in your Heavenly Father's love. Lay back and know He's got your back. And one thing about God, He might not answer the prayer totally the way you thought He would or in your timetable, but if you could trust that He's smarter than you, smarter than me, and if I'll just wait on Him, Many times, God's just not solving your problem, but he's solving about four or five other things in the midst of solving your problem. God's wisdom is so great that he sees from multi-dimensions. And he's meeting things that you're not even aware of, and that's why maybe it takes a little longer sometimes. In the midst of it, he's doing a new work in you, a new work in your marriage, a new work in your home. And that's where trust needs to come, come. 
And we need to trust in the Lord for that. Can I hear a good amen? amen. The Bible says he's a restorer of your soul. He restores your soul. That means he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals you. That word heal, Jehovah Rapha, means he causes your health to come back from the place that it left. My health returns and you're restored to your original origin. And that's just not physical health. He gives you, many of you, if you physically need to touch, the Lord's here to heal you this morning. Just, just receive healing in your body. But some of the greatest healing I have is in my mind. So many times I feel like Humpty Dumpty and I feel like work or situations have kind of shattered your, your mind, your emotions feel weak. And it's so beautiful what the Lord does. He just comes with the wind of his presence and he restores your soul. He puts you back together to your original design. Your mind, your emotions... You feel again, you got peace again. How many times you might have gone to bed just saying, I just need to go to bed, and you wake up in the morning and his mercies are new every morning. He hits you with a fresh dose of mercy. And he says, I'm with you. And he brings his wind and says, I've restored you. Now go get him, tiger. That's the way God is. He's, he's an amazing God. He's your shepherd. He's your provider. He's your peace. He's also your healer. He's your personal healer. He leads you in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Our righteous God has a right plan for your life, a right path for your life. That's so good to know that God has a path for you. Sometimes when I first got started, I didn't know exactly. I just learned to be faithful where the Lord put me. Just be faithful. Dominic said if you have extreme faithfulness, God's going to get you there faster. And I just knew to stay on the path of loving God, serving God, committing to the local body of Christ. Then who would have thought that one day God would speak to me and say, I called you to be a pastor, and that's the church I want you to pass. He, the Bible says the, the plan that it has for his children are like the dawn of the day. It will open up and get brighter to you. So don't get in a hurry. God knows your name and address. Keep being faithful where he puts you. When he wants to open up that next door and open up what he's planned for you. See, many of you have been working hard, and you're thinking, man, when's this door going to open? He's preparing you. The place has already been prepared for you. Just keep being faithful, keep being faithful, keep being faithful. And on an ordinary day, the door is going to open. And when it opens, you walk through that door with God's grace, because God's made that place available to you. Then he goes on to say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This speaks of Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Have you ever been through those times you felt like you're in the valley of the shadow of death, a tough season? Mir and I have been there. Some very, very, you see me up here cheering you on, preaching to you, but there's been some dark, shadowy days, seasons. You know, the thing that got me through was God was there. He was there. Thank God he was there. I didn't have the answers, but God would give me an answer through another person. It's amazing how God will give you the right people with the wisdom you need. Sometimes it could be an anointed lawyer that just will give you the wisdom how to deal with something. I mean, I don't, I don't suggest it, but me, I needed that. And God gave me a man that was fully anointed by the Holy Spirit. And I would call him every morning. And he would tell me exactly what to do. And I would use his wisdom. And in, in the Bible says this, though I walked through the valley, the wisdom was there. The next part of that says that not only there, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. While your enemies are trying to pick a fight with you, God's saying, sit down and have a meal. I got this. I mean, I mean, we might not feel that we got enemies, maybe enemies of circumstances, situations, on the job. And the Lord's saying to me, he said, Dominic, just listen to the wisdom I'm going to give you. And every morning I would pick up that wisdom and use it. And maybe others wanted to pick a fight with me, but I just was still. The Lord was solving this thing. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my... The Lord is saying, I am your defender. I'm the one that fights your battles. And he's saying, you prepare a table. He says, I want you to sit and rest and eat. Enjoy the good fruit that I've, I've got this battle. You know, right now we've got soldiers around the world that are employed, fighting our battles across this world right now so that you could be in church enjoying this service and go out to lunch stress-free because they're fighting for you. Amen. Thank God for all of our soldiers. And the Lord is saying, I'm the God of heaven's armies. The God of heaven's armies are angels. In, innumerable angels are in the spirit realm fighting for you right now. They've got my family. They've got my children. They make ways where there seems to be no ways. 
Right when the devil said, I got him now, God said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I got a big angel that's going to just move that thing over and give you a walking plane. You're going to walk right through that thing. I've, I've been there personally, and I've been there with my family, and I've watched God in the darkest seasons. The dark, even when I felt like my faith had run out, God's faith had, The Bible says you might be faithless, but God is always faithful. And sometimes when I felt that I just had a flicker of faith, God was strong. God knew that I loved him. God knew that I gave my heart to him, but sometimes in life you just don't know if you can go on. But God says, I'm going to make a way. And he cleared some things over and over again in my life. I could tell you that God made a way. And he'll do the same for you, my friend. He'll do the same for you. Why? Because he says, in the presence of your enemies, he's working. Trust him. Rest in God. He's battling for you. You're not going to go under. You're not going to lose your home. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to lose your family. You're not going to lose your marriage. You're not going to lose your baby. God's fighting for you. Can I hear a good amen, church? Amen. Praise the Lord. And then he said, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. You anoint my head. What's the Lord saying here? He's saying, I've anointed you. Jehovah M. Kedesh, the Lord who sanctifies you, sets you apart for a specific assignment. Before you were born, God knew you. And the Bible says all your days were put in a book. He set you apart. You've got a special place in this world, my friend. The devil is a liar that says you're a nobody and says, do you really matter? You've got special talents. And the Bible says he anoints you with oil. That's the mashak. The rubbing of God upon your life that sets you apart, sets you above, sets you apart for a specific thing. Your gift is different than my gift. Your dream is different than my dream. Your vision is different, but it is special. It is, it is needed. Society's got to have what's inside of you. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for what's inside of every young man, every man in this place, Holy Spirit. Father, you're preparing it. It might. The Bible says, though the vision tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come to pass. Though the vision tarries, wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass. Encourage, Lord, the men in this place. Encourage the men that have been faithful. Encourage them, Lord, that their day's coming. Encourage them to remain faithful, Lord. Father God, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that their labor is not in vain because they do it in the Lord. You see, you know, you've got your eye upon them. Just because your eye's on the sparrow, how much more is your eye upon your children? And that goes for you, sisters. God is for you. God is on your side. And God is with you. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. And then he says, your cup, he says, my cup runs over. He says, I'm going to anoint you so much. I'm going to give you the overflow. And that's what the anointing, the overflow, so you can give and give and give to others. You can share your bread. You can share what I've, your experience. You can share your faith. You can give out from the overflow. When you feel like you don't have nothing to give, the Lord says, open your mouth and I'm going to fill it again. Some of you have community groups, don't worry about that group. When you get in there with those people, God's going to open up your mouth and give you the word. The anointing is going to come into that, 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 that group. The Spirit of God will be there. The Holy Spirit will minister, build, touch, lift, heal, restore, and minister like only he could do. Because you said, I'm willing, God will meet you in a powerful, in an awesome way. Get ready, get ready, get ready. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Can we just stand to our feet this morning in Jesus' name?